Friends, uh, greetings from uh, SID International and from Tanzania. Uh, as you know, I'm the current president of the Society for International Development. Um, and I was very pleased to receive an invitation uh, from SID Israel uh, to attend this uh, one-day uh, uh, international conference on, on development. Uh, I very much regret my inability to join you today, uh, but I wish your conference every success. I just want to say that I hope next year uh, I will be able to oblige um, to another invitation uh, if that comes through. But I also want to commend um, the efforts and the partnership uh, that underlies um, uh, SID Israel and uh, Mashav. Um, I understand that Mashav is um, a unit uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, very much focused on international cooperation. Uh, I think this partnership, uh, which I, I believe uh, will unleash uh, a continuing conversation uh, in Israel, in the state of Israel, on how best Israel can renew uh, and re-energize uh, its role uh, in international cooperation, and particularly in terms of Israel's relationship uh, with the Global South. Um, Global South is pretty fragmented today. Um, part of the Global South now are emerging economies, and you have within the Global South uh, the poor uh, countries uh, under which, um, as you know, uh, the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, seem to be very much uh, focused upon. So South-South cooperation uh, has seen um, uh, a state of flux uh, in the last uh, two decades uh, with the onset of globalization, the intensification of globalization, uh, with the crisis of the Doha uh, trade round of talks. Uh, so the, what Nyerere used to define you know, as the trade union of the poor, uh, which underpinned uh, the whole ethos and the thrust of G77, uh, also has, uh, has, has, has waned. Um, I believe that Israel, uh, which is now uh, a member of the OECD, uh, but also a country uh, that has developed uh, its own uh, very modern uh, technology as well as knowledge base, uh, and being very much <clears throat> on the on the peripheral of uh, of, of, of Africa, uh, on the margins of Africa, <clears throat> I think it should be able uh, to link up with Africa and play uh, a very critical role because I do believe uh, that Israel has the relevant knowledge uh, and technology to play a part in Africa. And on this point, um, I wish to recollect uh, very, very fondly uh, my own uh, memory about um, Israel's role uh, in my own country, uh, in Tanzania. As a student, as a law student at the University of Dar es Salaam in the mid-60s, um, I was able to see uh, Israel uh, cooperation with Tanzania take root. Uh, Israel was able to contribute towards the creation of our national service a hybrid of military training uh, as well as imbibing uh, the nation building spirit uh, within our young people in this country. Israel was able to share with Tanzania its, its kibbutz experience, kibbutz in terms of its military as well as developmental uh, sense. And of course it contributed to Nyerere's thinking about the whole villagization uh, program in this country. Micro projects of agricultural kind, small irrigation schemes, one, one, one does look back to that kind of very uh, robust uh, cooperation uh, between Israel uh, and Tanzania. And I think uh, today, given the, the level of knowledge, the level of, uh, of, uh, of uh, technology that Israel has developed, particularly in the areas of, of solar, in, in terms of capacity building, human capacity building, uh, I think Israel, in renewing uh, international cooperation with Africa, I think it can uh, look to that old experience, renew it, and be able to contribute substantially uh, to Africa's transformation. Now, I understand that uh, the key theme of your conference uh, is to basically look at the unfolding character of international cooperation today. Uh, and one has got to uh, clearly state here, uh, it's very, very evidential, that in as much as ODA has not declined that substantially, Though OECD does point out that in 2011 it did decline uh, quite a bit, I think by about 3%, one sees generally that the Western world, 
um, and when I say Western world, because Japan, I think, still uh, does uh, believe in some kind of ODA. But you see, you see a retraction. You see the, the Western governments uh, retreating uh, from ODA. And one can understand this, because even Africa itself has made socioeconomic headway. Africa no longer talks about handouts. Africa no longer talks about aid in its traditional sense. And therefore, one can clearly understand why the Western governments are not looking at aid in its traditional sense, in the, in the form of, of, of handouts like money and whatnot. And I think this is a good starting point, really, to relook what should define international cooperation in the 21st century. Uh, of course, one has got to uh, admit uh, that when the United Nations set in 2000 to pass the Millennium Development Goals, there was a generalized concern around the world, you know, about poverty entrenching, uh, particularly in the, in the, in the poor uh, global south. And therefore, the Millennium Development Goals, I think, were uh, an excellent way to look into how international cooperation uh, could be reconfigured and, and, and redefined. But now, looking at the post MDG era, post-2015, I think one needs to go back to the basics. How sustainable can MDGs be without Africa undergoing major social and economic transformation? You really need to address the structural challenges that Africa faces and look at those structural ch uh, challenges as the point of departure away from an MDG kind of an agenda which was very much driven by resource flows from the north, and look at how those resources can actually go into the productive capacities, into the infrastructure, into the education, into unleashing agriculture in Africa, promote food security. These are the areas that will bring about sustainability of MDGs post-2015. And therefore, international cooperation in the future really has got to focus on those areas which can open up the economic spaces of Africa and other underdeveloped regions of the world in order to ensure that Africa not only uh, is capable of developing itself, but is also going to be a major participant uh, in the global uh, uh, political and governance arena. And this, of course, reminds me uh, of uh, the statement that was made by the father of the, uh, of, of the nation of Tanzania, uh, Mwalim Julius Nyerere, and, uh, um, a very dear friend of Golda Meir um, uh, in, in that old past. And Nyerere in 1967 told Tanzanians that money is not the foundation of development. Money is the outcome, is the result of development. And he said what defines development, what underpins development are four things. The people, land, ethical politics, good leadership. And I continuously see those four areas as being the critical areas for which international cooperation should really focus upon. And there are four areas for which Israel, for all this period since 1948, has really also focused upon. I think there is a lot that we can benefit from Israel as it redefines its role uh, in a new world today, as it, redefi it redefines its role uh, in Africa, a role that it played uh, in, this, in this region quite well from Ghana 1957 and onwards until the Israel-Arab War of 1973. And when we talk about the people, we are really talking about how do you develop the human capacity of the people, the people of Africa, so that they are able to take hold and respond to the challenges of their own development. When you talk about land, I mean, today we talk about oil and gas, we talk about the potential of agriculture, food security, climate change. These are the key issues that revolve around land issues. What can we learn from Israel? A predominantly desert country and yet able to transform itself by using modern technologies, by educating its people. So this is the kind of focus that I think international cooperation. Ethical, ethical politics. You can't, without ethical politics, without good leadership, there is no way in which you can sustain development. And again, Israel, I mean, 
you see the changes of government in Israel, the ethical politics. I mean, one can understand the challenges that Israel still faces, you know, over the, over the, uh, the conflict situation that, that they continue there. And I really wish you well in terms of forging a, a rapprochement and a new way in which you can resolve uh, the conflict uh, with Palestine. So Israel really, uh, I think, can uh, become a major player in the OECD in redefining uh, international, international cooperation. And I really think that uh, as we look at the post-MDG era, uh, I believe that Israel uh, can uh, be a major uh, catalyst uh, in the redefinition uh, of, the new, of, the new, of the new agenda. But let me also mention, and I think this is a very important point, uh, to look at during this conference. Israel has been able to find a nexus between security and development. As you know that Africa still faces uh, significant security challenges from Sudan Darfur to DRC to Somalia and now Mali. International cooperation has got now to look more and more at how best it can also contribute towards bringing about a nexus between security and development. The European Union, about six, seven years ago, came up with this proposal uh, to the African Union to structure an EU-Africa uh, security, uh, peace and security architecture, which brought about the establishment of five regional military brigades, uh, which can respond to uh, political instabilities, insurgents, and one. It, it does not very well, but the structure is there. I guess the challenge here is the resources to enable uh, these, uh, these uh, brigades to be able uh, to, fulfill, uh, to fulfill the role. But I'm giving this as an example uh, of the kind of security cooperation that can exist and which can be one of the defining features of the new uh, framework of international cooperation. We saw in Mali uh, lately, you know, how France led uh, a coalition uh, of Western forces uh, to help Ma Mali uh, sort out the, uh, the Al-Qaeda uh, problem uh, in, 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 in northern Mali. Uh, we have seen the role of the United Nations in DRC, and of course there are all kinds of views about the UN role in DRC. Uh, but I think one has got to recognize the important role that the international community via the international uh, cooperation framework is able to contribute towards uh, promoting peace and stability in Africa. And without peace, uh, without, with, 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 without peace you, cannot, you cannot have uh, development. So finally, uh, let me conclude uh, again by wishing your conference every success. Uh, but as I've underscored, I think this particular conference, uh, and I believe that it's an annual conference, uh, is important in terms of enabling Israelis to look back to the role that they, that they played in Africa in the late 50s uh, up to the early 70s. I strongly believe that Israel has the knowledge, has the technology to be able to help Africa undergo the kind of transformation that it has defined for itself. I truly hope that out of your conference, you will begin uh, a broad-based conversation that will lead to a government policy that will renew and re-energize its framework of international cooperation. And Africa will look uh, to Israel in terms of reenacting and rebuilding the kind of cooperation uh, that used to exist uh, during those past few years. Thank you very much and all the best to you.